Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the, the message tonight, what you're speaking to our hearts. I thank you, Lord, we say yes and amen to what you are doing. In the book of Genesis, God gives a pattern of things. And how many know God really doesn't change? Come on, anybody here? Hello, we're just getting started. But God brought order to chaos. See, in the midst of the beginning, it was chaos. It was a bunch of nothing. And God brought order in order. Come on, he didn't say, let's turn the lights on. You know, let's create man and have them float out here, and then let's turn the lights on, and then, and then let's throw some animals in the midst of it before there's even land. There was order. And I want you to know God has an order in your life. God has a plan for your life, and it's in order. God can bring order to chaos in every area of our lives. And there is a process that must be followed. Come on. How many know sometimes we get into a rut? We wake up. We eat breakfast. We run out the door at 2 tell. Oh, sorry. Hallelujah. That's just you. But anyway, we get to this. Don't calm down. Don't be. She doesn't need to get stirred up by you. She's going to get stirred up enough tonight. But we get wake up, we wake up, and we have the same thing that all of us try to do. We all try to do it. I do it myself, hallelujah. I get all the computers going, and it takes 10 minutes for it to get going as good as I need it to go for me to do what I want to do, hallelujah. So all the stuff that we do every day is in order. And we like order when it comes to our stuff. But when it comes to God's stuff, we don't want it in order. We're like, I want money, give me money. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. I want healed, just heal me. Pretty simple, right? Some of you are waiting for the punchline, aren't you? You're just, some of you don't like waiting for the title. We don't like waiting for what, where we're going here. That's why we're waiting. See, God shows us in the beginning his way of doing things not our way, his way. In Genesis chapters 1 and 2, it was in the beginning God created. And you got to understand, we must get that right first. We got to understand God creates something in our hearts or lives, and that's always going to be first. You're not going to have provision for something until it's created in you first. We're going somewhere. Sometimes the word created carries the idea of cutting out or carving an idea or creating something from nothing. How many know when you get an idea... Many times it's from nothing. Let's simplify this for a moment. You come home tonight, some of people will have an idea that has golden arches with it. McDonald's. Kids love to say that. They just see the arches and they want to order. Come on. But let me tell you something. We all have an idea and it pops in our head and it comes from nothing. The earth was without form and void. In other words, the earth was like soup without any ingredients. Hallelujah. Sometimes that's the way the earth is. It's like soup without anything. In other words, it's bottomless. How many have ever had just broth? Isn't it pretty awful? Come on. I fasted so many times, and that would be the great part of my meal. It was broth. While they're having chicken, vegetables, and all the stuff, and I'm having 
broth. Come on. Sometimes it gets to the place that that's a soup with nothing. And the message, I, I want you to understand, the structure of what God sometimes is doing in our life first will be nothing. He gives you a vision for something, but it has to start out with nothing. Because there's an order. First you have to get the broth hot. Then you start putting the vegetables in. Then you start putting the goodness in. Then you start making it something that is worthy. Notice, the earth was without form, and God brings a form to chaos. See, sometimes the earth is without form, and your life and our life is without form. And God brings order. In other words, the earth was like insanity. And God brought form to it. Could you imagine for a moment the earth without water separating land? Could you just imagine walking out of these doors and the ocean just sweeping through the street? There's order to the earth. Do you understand that? Gravity, everything to do with the earth, the planets, there is order. And without order, there would be chaos. Imagine for a moment if we were driving down the street and, and, and all the stoplights were just on green. How many know? That's not going to have order. Everybody going to go, and they're going to go because they think this is the way it's supposed to be. You say, are you going somewhere? Yes, I am. This is still the introduction. Day one, God said, let there be light. Day two, God said, let there be sky. Or firmament. Many of you, I'm telling you, sometimes we get to the question, what's firmament? We think, oh, what's this? What's that? And God has an order of things. God, day three, God said, separate. And the waters receded and made dry land. Come on. And, and the land grew vegetation on day four. And God said, let there be light in the sky. You've got to understand. Now day five, God says, let the fish and the birds. Day six, God said, let the life of the earth create. God created all the land of the animals. God made man Come on. And then he rested. Because there was order to his structure. We like to do things out of order, don't we? Anybody here like to do things out of order? No, not a bit. Not a bit. The Bible says that God took a rib from Adam and made Eve. You know, biblically, that is a false translation. It's a false translation. I'm going to say something tonight that's going to probably bug some people. The word rib is actually as curved. If you really want to really study the scripture, if you really want to study the scripture, the rib of Adam was actually the feminine part of Adam. There was a part of Adam that was removed from him. We are actually dealing with some of this, and I might be releasing a book about it, because it's going to mess up this transgender garbage that's going on in our United States of America. God intended that when Adam was created, he was created so that he could be one with his wife. So when he removed, it says, a cur as curved literally of the body or figuratively the door of his life. In other words, it removed a part of him, not a rib, because we have the same amount of ribs as a female. And when God removed that, 
part of Adam. He removed it. He didn't leave it there. He removed it and he made woman so that we could, so we could actually be one with, women, with, our, with a woman. In other words, we actually be, took part of our life and made it into the woman. And we took the feminine part out of us, where God did, to create the female. See, today, people are trying to go backwards, which is blasphemy. Come on, when you're changing back and forth, come on. The most popular transsexual, uh, 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 transgender race is trying to go back. They went to a female, now they're trying to go back to the male because they regret it. Come on, people. And then the United States is going through all this garbage. Uh, this is extra credit. About what bathroom to use. It's like, really? I say put a lock on the doors. Come on, let's go back to old days. You lock the door behind you. That way you don't know what's in there. Hallelujah. Come on. That's just extra credit. There's some things that's about to happen. And we need to be ready for it. But I'm not talking about that, that tonight. Now remember I said... The creation God shows is his way of doing things. The title tonight, the specific title tonight, are you ready? God won't bless your mess. Is anybody here? Are you still with me? God won't bless your mess. And we're going to go down some avenues tonight, and it's supposed to hurt a little bit. It's supposed to stir up some things, because God has a way of doing things. He has, a th he has an order to things that we will never, ever be able to mess up. We like to try, but whenever God says, I'm going to do this, you've got to understand, there is part of your life that has to get cleaned up. When God has first, when he first told any of us that he's going to use us, when he told us, we weren't ready to be used. When God said, I'm going to make you a preacher, you're going to prophesy the word of the Lord, lay hands on the sick. At that time, I had no business doing any of that. And he had to come in and get order to my life instead of using my mess. Hallelujah. But we're going to get into some stuff and it's going to be a lot more personal. See, God saw the earth was without form, void. It means empty. See, our life sometimes is empty, and we're saying, come on, God, you need to just bless it. See, God took the first four days to form the earth, and God took the next couple days to fill it. God's order is still going to be the same. Come on. He's going to give you the vision or the nothing. That's Come on, a vision is actually something that is nothing. A vision is faith. Faith is zero. Come on, if, if you say, I am healed when you're sick, how many know that is actually nothing? Come on, this, this is preaching whether you like it or not. This is the way it is. God cannot fill what has not been formed. If you don't have vision, he can't fill it. Come on. If you're not going to believe for it, how is he going to fill it? And when we get a vision for something in our life, whatever it is, we get a vision for it, that's where God can come on, onto the scene and say, okay, hey, look, they're believing for this. I can build with that. So he starts filling it with the things that are required to complete that. But a lot of us are saying, come on, God, bless me. Just do it. No vision. No real purpose. Just bless our mess. Just bless this stuff. Bless my family. Oh, it's all messed up. Bless this. My finances are all messed up. Bless that. I, I want to be healed, God, you know. Then he formed it. 
He saw it was without form, then he formed it. Then he filled it. See, this is God's way of doing things, and God doesn't change. God doesn't change. How many times have we heard, God is always on time? You know why it's always late in our time? Because first things first, he has to get you to start with nothing. And then when you start, then he has to fill it and clean up your junk. And then he has to get your mess cleaned up a little bit more. And then after all this stuff... Then he's finally able to complete it. It could have been done in a week, but we made it take a year. See, why? here's the thing I love to hear Christians always say this. Why does God take so long to do something in my life? You know, most of the people that say that are people who aren't really close to God. The reason I say this If you spend time with God every day, you can ask that question. But when you're not spending time with him every day, really, we have no business asking that question. You know, it's only by God's grace that some people actually ever get anything fulfilled. Why? Because they're a mess. They're waiting for it to be blessed. People want healed while they're smoking. Do you understand this? Lord, heal my chest and hard difficulty of breathing as they puff on a cigarette. How can we ask God to bless that? That's a mess. James 1, 17, whatsoever or whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights of heaven, and he never changes or cast a shifting shadow. See, God never changes. God can't change because he's already perfect. God can't get any better because he's already the best some of us get healed and it's like a shock to us why because sometimes it seems like he's blessing our mess but if you really look when you actually finally receive something You had to say yes on the inside. You had to clean up something. You had to repent. You know, repentance is the number one fastest way to clean up things. Get rid of your mess. God can't learn because he already knows everything that has ever occurred or will ever occur. Even with you, Haley, God never sees you do something that goes, huh, I never saw that before. I never saw that coming. He's not surprised. But sometimes we'll, get, we'll do something in our life and we'll try to keep it from him like, oh, he's never seen this before. And then we're like, God bless us. Somebody should be here for this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Sometimes when we have a mess of our homework, we can't really ask God to bless our schooling. Come on. When you're not completing your homework, you really can't say, God, please bless my school. Help me get to the next grade. When you're part of the F troop, you know what the F Troop is? Well, it was a bad show a long time ago. Cowboys and Indians and stuff. But anyway, 
But we get to the place sometimes that we ask God to bless our F. Come on, that's like saying, God, could you bless this Twinkie and make it nurturing to my body? Mm -hmm. Come on. See, I'm glad you brought that to my attention. It never comes from God. God never looks at you and says, wow, thank you. I'm so glad you brought that to my attention because if you hadn't said it, I would have never known it. If anything, he says, what about those other things? How you doing? See, God never changes. And, and if this is how he worked then, and he never changes, ain't he the same way? <laughs> he likes order. He likes order. How many have ever tried to build a house? Starting with the, 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 the roof. Come on, get the roof all done, and then you start building the foundation, right? Come on. Sound work? Sound like it'll work? Yeah, it would with you, wouldn't it? Because some, some of the things you're actually, I'm glad you walked into that. Some of the things that you're asking God to bless is a mess. You try to just give him a little bit. I just give him a little. And then you're like, come on, bless it. Why isn't he blessing it? See, some of us, we make a mess of our finances, and then we're like, come on, God. As we sit back and look at our flat screen TV with no cable because we can't pay the bill. Come on. See, some people, I love whenever I go to my brother's house sometimes, and I throw him under the bus if he was here. Has like a 48 inch flat screen plasma thing of jig, all the bells and whistles. But sometimes he has food. It's like, man, downgrade to a 13 inch TV and let's get the cupboard filled. See, God fills what is formed. So in other words, if you start getting faith for something, you can actually finally see it, and then he'll start forming it. But the thing is, when you get a vision for something, many times, here comes the mess. You try to do the forming. How many have ever gotten a, a vision for something and then try to do it yourself? We try to help God out. And then God comes on the scene and he's like, I'm supposed to be filling this. That's like God giving you a vision for an art piece when you're supposed to use wood instead of foam. You try to do it your way and then you sit back and start looking at the instructions or looking it up, how it's done, and you find out, well, <laughs> I didn't use the right stuff. See, that's like saying, God, bless my mess. Got 50 holes in here now. Keeps falling off. You had a vision, right? But you try to fill it yourself. I'm just having fun, but it's working. Have you ever seen a foundation poured for a house? Anybody ever seen or heard of how they pour a foundation for a house? Come on, everybody's, everybody's acknowledging. They just take 10 concrete trucks and just back it up into a property. Say, is this the property? Yeah, and they just dump it on the property, right? And just let it flow where it needs to go. Wherever it needs to go, it just flows. And then they drive away and they just hope that that's right. Why? What's wrong with that picture? Just dump the concrete on the ground as it runs all over the place, and then they just build a house on it. 
They're like, well, this, this area went downhill, so we'll have to build the house kind of like this. How long is the house going to last if you build it on a concrete foundation that never had form? In other words, it's like asking God, build my house on my mess. Come on, I got the foundation done. God, come down and build my house. First, you got to dig the footers. Come on. And then you build what? See, forms have to be built. Why? Because it's structure. There has to be form. Come on, this works. To pour the concrete in and and. We expect God to either change his mind or waste his blessing. God, <laughs> this should be a lot of our prayers the last six months. Bless our mess. And he says, I ain't working with that. If I said it, I'll do it. But until we get it all in order, I'm not doing it. You say, but that would be, that would mean he's a liar. Some people like to use that word liar. They said it and now they're not doing it. But see, God doesn't change. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, whenever God says it, it gets in your spirit, you have a vision for it, it can't be a messy vision. You have to allow him to fill it. And then whenever it gets in proper order, then it comes into completion. See, God will not waste his blessing. See, religion says, well, God said. But God says, it's not in order. See, sometimes people say, well, God said I'm going to have a new spouse, so they just go get a new spouse. God said, that wasn't the vision I have for you. Why do you think divorce is so rapid in America, especially in the church? Some people are like, well, that's my husband. No, it's not your borrowed husband. That was somebody else's husband. You didn't wait for yours. And then you're like, God, fix him. He's like, he's not even yours. Why would I fix it? How can you ask God to fix a husband that doesn't belong to you? You know what a mess some people are? I'm going to preach it someday more than I'm doing right now. When a person enters into a marriage with a husband or a wife that's not supposed to be their husband or wife, it's fornication. The Bible says I'm husband and wife that God puts together. Not you. Isn't that fun? Come on, that's going to mess up some people. Messed me up when I thought of it. Which I didn't really think of it. It was put in my head. Hallelujah. Let's go. This is good, isn't it? See, we ask God, bless my mess. Come on. Lord, bless it. I want you to bless it. Just bless it. Just bless it. Come on. There's good questions coming with answers. We don't stop to give God a form to fill. Sometimes whenever God says, I want to do something in your life, we just try to help it out, try to get it all started up. When he's like, I just want to help you. I want to be part of this. And if we don't allow him to be a part of it, it doesn't work. Sometimes we try to make it happen. How many have ever gotten frustrated? I know it's not behind me. Nobody ever gets frustrated, do you? You know why you usually get frustrated? 
because you're trying to do it your way. And then when God comes on the scene, the first thing that he does is bring you back to zero. Why? All right, let's, let's just say this for a minute. Let's say God allows you to pour the foundation wherever you want. It's everywhere. And he allows you to start building the house. And you're like, everything's crooked. Come on, I'm building this wall. It's crooked. I, I try to connect the truss, and, and it's like a, a, a foot off. And then you look down, you're like, it's because the foundation is off. It's a mess. So if God comes on the scene and he's a contractor, that's what God is, he's a contractor. And he looks at it and he goes, well, he goes, I could fix all this. What's the first thing you think he's going to do? He's going to knock it all down. He's going to start it over. Why? Because it wasn't his work. Come on, I didn't know some of this was coming. See, God won't bless your mess. He's not going to come on and go, well, uh, be healed to the house. <laughs> he could, but he won't. Why? Because that's out of his order. He doesn't like to go out of his own order. I'm going to say something that kind of shocked me whenever God first said it to me. God said to me one time, I can't. I was like, that's impossible. I bind that in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. And you got to understand, the reason he can't sometimes is because he has an order. That's the problem. Sometimes our order is the problem. That's like looking at the... The, the, the pictures on how to put a trampoline together, you're like, well, the hook goes in there and that goes in there. And then when you get it all together, you find you miss something. It's chaos. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. You need some blessing. Hallelujah. See, God wants to pour out his blessings upon you, but he wants it to be in order. Is anybody getting this? How many of you know that if we got it, God created it? Did you hear me? If you got it, God created it first. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made. So if we want to see God work in, in an area of our life, or to fill an area of our life, we have to learn what he says about the area. What kind of form he wants. And then do our best to build the form he wants. Do it his way. Because he can't change or do what is against his nature. He will not bless your mess. It has to come in order. Sometimes we look at our bills and we're like, God, I need about five grand. Right now, just five grand, just bring it down. Bring it down now, bring it down now, bring it down now. That's like going into a bank and say, how much you need? About five grand. About? What you need it for? I don't know, got a pile of bills. How much is the bills? About five grand. How do you know that? Because it looks like about five grand. Beggars say, go back home and figure out what you need. God does the same thing to you. Come on. Is anybody here? Does anybody say, come on, I'll do it now, I'll do it now, I'll do it now. Anybody got that? Is 
You know what's funny? Some of us in our mess, when we're asking God to bless it, no matter how broke we get, we always got money for cookies or ice cream. It's like, man. It's like, come on, God, bring it down now. I want some ice cream. Come on, God, bring it down now. Toilet paper and ice cream. That's the number one goal in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. So that's all you need today. Forget the cell phones and the Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Come on. First thing to go. But cookies, ice cream, and toilet paper. That's the goal right there. That's the goal. See, to be blessed is to receive di uh, divine or supernatural aid. To be favored or fortunate. In other words, when God fulfills something in your life, you are fortunate. Isn't that right? You're fortunate. Hallelujah. All right. God heals you over and over and over again. But every time he does it, he has to clean up your mess first. Every single time. Except when you break a bone. The tears alone, I think, gives you grace. No, don't just start crying to get stuff. Gotta, gotta catch on. Hallelujah. But sometimes you get to a place to where it takes a lot to get in order. God could do it, boop, just like that. But no. Why doesn't he do it fast every time? Why doesn't he do it? Did you hear anything I've said tonight? Because there's a mess over here. It takes it one time to finally click on the inside. Yeah, yeah, I want it tonight. Sure, let's just get it done tonight. Boom, it was done. And then sometimes we try to open the door back to the mess. And don't, but the, don't, no, no, no. There's no buts in the Holy Ghost. You got to understand, you get to the place to where sometimes you try to open the door back to, you know what happens? That's like termites. See, so you build it according to God's plan and God's purpose. You finally get it the way it's supposed to be. And then sometimes it starts out, you're a mess, and God cleans up your mess, gets you to lined up, and then all of a sudden you finally get that complete. You get everything complete, and then you start opening the door back up. That's like termites coming to eat every testimony you got. How many of you could use a little of God's blessing. Come on, little dab of you. Some of you probably responded with a lot. I could use a lot. Hallelujah. This is not serving mashed potatoes. How much you want? A lot. Come on. There's an order. You got to get a vision for it. Yeah, you do. And we do. There's some other things coming, though. How many of you ever wondered why God doesn't bless you in one area of your life? Have you ever noticed how many times we might finances going good, health going good, and then something else? Eh. Why? Because that's the mess part. God will bless you in the areas you're good and not the mess. He will bless this, he'll bless that, he'll bless that, but he won't touch that until it's in order. I'm going somewhere, it's coming. It's coming. Are you building the right forms? Is anybody building the right forms? See, so God has something to pour out to. You've got to understand, if you don't have the right forms ready, 
He has nothing to pour into. I'm, almost, I'm wanting to get ahead of myself, but I can't. I'm almost there. You want God to bless your finances. Are they in order or are they a mess? Listen before you answer. Broke is not a mess. But some people want God to bless them when they are not tithing. Some people are wanting God to bless them financially when they're not in order. When they are doing things they're not supposed to be doing to the finances. God won't bless that. Then they're like, well, you know. On one side, God wants to bless them. And they might be tithing. They might be giving. But they're blowing money where they're not supposed to. That alone will cause a mess in your finances, right? Using credit cards. Getting everything charged up. Going to deep in debt. So you got to understand, that can cause a mess of things. And God cannot bless that. There's a lot of people who's come through this ministry have gotten so complicated in it because one person in the house says, I want to tithe. The other person says, I, I want to give just a little bit. So they end up trying to compromise in that. And then they're doing some other stuff. They're spending money left and right, doing things they're not supposed to be doing. They're not listening to God. They're just spending money, spending money, buying new things, just buying everybody new things. And they're always broke, always fighting in the area of finance. And they're saying, God, bless me. God can't bless that. He won't bless it because he wants order. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. See, we want God to bless our family. So my question is, is it in order? I remember a certain man. He wanted God to bless his marriage and make it right. But really, after God brought this into my spirit, this sermon alone, he, has asked, he keeps asking God to bless his marriage and his marriage is out of order. God won't bless that. I'm not going to say who right now. But God is not going to bless a marriage that's out of order. See, is the husband in the right position in the house? Because if the husband isn't in the right position, God can't bless the house. Come on. See, but at the same time, is the husband spiritual? See, sometimes... A man gets so obnoxious, well, you're supposed to submit to me, woman. Well, you're supposed to be spiritual, too. You can't ask, you can't ask and God wouldn't ask, a woman to submit to somebody who ain't right. And then a husband always wants to honor somebody who isn't even right. You got to understand, order. God bless my mess. Come on. The husband can honor his wife all, she, all he wants, but if she isn't submitting to him, it's not going to work. Then you're like, God bless my marriage. God's like, what? Get your house in order first. You say, oh, God can't heal that. Oh, he can heal. He can deliver. But it only comes through repentance. See, Husbands are supposed to be a spiritual leader in the house. This doesn't mean a woman can't lead. It's just the man is supposed to be a spiritual leader. And you've got to understand, a man is supposed to lead by an example. Come on, preach it to myself a little bit. You've got to understand, you're supposed to lead by an example. In coming to church, praying, uh, doing things that you're supposed to be doing. Does your wife have to drag you to church kicking and screaming, Sam? Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't part of it. Come on. <laughs> See, sometimes we get to a place to where the wife is trying to drag you to church. And, and I, this is for, for those that are listening in the CD, I guess. But... 
And we wonder, why won't my wife submit to me? You're not the spiritual leader. Why should she submit to you? It's like when a man is abusive to his wife. That woman should never submit to that garbage. If a man ever raises his hand to you at any time in your life, you don't submit. You let me know. Oh, oh. oh excuse me. Yeah, Bubby would take him out. Hallelujah. It'd be the last time. Hallelujah. Are you a godly man? See, you got to understand, submitted to God. You can't ask a wife to submit to you if you haven't submitted to God. And a wife has no business asking a husband to honor them if they don't honor God. In this, in the quiet. Come on. If we got to submit, you got to submit. You had to both see. See, we all got to do a part. Do you love your wife like Christ of the church? You know what that really means? Here's one thing God said. This is one thing loving your wife like Christ of the church really means. One thing is you would die for her. You would literally step in front of anything to stop harm from coming to you or your, your wife or children. That is a husband that loves your wife. See, God laid his life down for us. That's how much he loved the church. Doesn't matter how the wife is, what's going on, you would lay your life down for her. See, if you would not lay your life down for her, why should she submit to you? See, a husband is supposed to be a protector. Now, at first, it's, it might just be a frog. Ribbit. It might be a spider. How many know some houses are in disorder? It's like, man, there's noise down in, in, in the kitchen, and the husband crawls under the bed. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I tell, I tell you what, if I did that in my house, the burglar would be running out of the house scared because... He would hear what's happening to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that would never happen, by the way. Hallelujah. So another thing, your children. You can't really ask children to submit to you if you're not submitting to God. I think Medea said it best. <laughs> See, back when I was in school, you, you said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, sir. Come on, isn't that right? You, said, you, you were polite. You, you, you didn't say like you said today. I like to just rent Medea, not the video. I mean, the person. Come to my house. I'll put you upstairs, and she'd have her purse all over you people. Hallelujah. Every time you back talk, you'd be like, shut up. <laughs> Come on. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. I mean, she, you know, she wouldn't get the gun out on a child unless you were doing something really bad. But she would hit you with the purse. I know that. Slap you upside your head. Hallelujah. You think you stomp up the stairs? She'd be up those stairs faster than you. Hallelujah. So 
So, I mean, you ask God to bless your mess. Here's the thing. You can't ask God to bless you and your children if you don't know where your children are. You know, some families, they don't even know where their kids are because if they did, they'd be calling the police. I almost said popo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good thing religion tonight. Religion would be mad. <laughs> Just from the Medea crack. But I'm telling you, come on. Children running around doing things that they do. If you don't know where your children are, you can't ask God to bless them. Come on. A parent. Do you know what a parent is? It's not just to be a pal. We don't always have to say yes. No is okay. If you get a no, it's a no. You say, I don't like it. What if Medea told you no? She'd be like, all right, I'm cool. I'll go play we. Come on. See, everybody needs a little fear of God and Medea. They're not of the same person. It's just different. You can't ask God to bless your life when it's a mess. Come on. Lord, bless me. You can't ask God to bless you when you got peanut butter and jelly sandwich sitting at the end of your bed that's been there for three weeks. You can't ask God to bless you in your room when you can't walk like this through your room. If you got to walk through your room like this, <laughs> or like this, something's wrong, you can't ask God to bless that. Isn't it exciting? See, sometimes... You can't ask God to bless you if you are sitting around doing nothing. See, what does God say about these areas in his word? How are you doing against that? You don't know. It's time to find out about having your house in order. Honoring your wife. Loving her like Christ of the church. Honoring your husband. Honoring God. Keeping him first. Knowing where your children are. Raising a child the way they should go so that they do not depart from it. Children don't have to like you as a parent. They have to respect you. Come on. And this exciting. Here's one that gets me. I had a friend. Is and, and I'm not saying this, don't don't receive this personal. This is about my friend, but sometimes we ask God to bless our mess. He was about four hundred dollars or four hundred dollars. You know, he was about four four hundred pound man. And uh he was a slob. I mean his car we all have messy cars. If you have children, you have a messy car. I mean, it just, they are pigs. It doesn't matter. I mean, I put my hand on the door one day, and there was a donut in there. Hallelujah. It's like, <laughs> it's a chocolate donut. I mean, it's like, what in the world? This is not storage. Hallelujah. This is a door handle. Anyway, not to mention any names. Hallelujah. But sometimes it's just nasty. And but God brought a conviction on me about my friend at one time. I was riding in his car, and he gave me a ride somewhere, and when I got in, <laughs> I got in his car. I don't know if I can, here we go. And, and when I got in, you gotta understand, I'm getting in the passenger side. I had to get in like this, and I had to lift my legs up like this to get it on top of the trash in the front seat floorboard. 
and my legs were a lot higher than, hallelujah. But it was full, and it wasn't old stuff. It was brand new stuff. I'm like, have you cleaned this thing out? He goes, this is a weekly thing. I'm like, weekly? It had donut containers, coffee cups, and sodas, diet sodas, which I don't understand, diet soda when you're having a monster burger. It's kind of, you know, you think that's wiping out the fat or what? But anyway, all these containers, fast food, Twinkie boxes, and all this stuff is in his car, and, and, and that's the sometimes we're like, God bless our mess. And one time he told me, he goes, you know why I'm so big? I remember this car. And that's the first thing that came to my head. That's why. You eat that every week. Come on. I mean, shoot. Hallelujah. That's a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I understand. He goes, I have a gland. It's not working right. I'm like, no, it's more than that. You're asking God to, he's like, I just wish God would heal me sometime. I'm like, God ain't going to bless that. He cannot bless you when you're eating a box of rain dings. You're eating a box of Twinkies. I mean, I literally one time, we went to a restaurant. He never tipped, and he always ordered four meals. But he ne- I mean, it was just a nasty habit. He would, he would eat his whole meal. we get to the outside. He'd pick up a box of Twinkies, eat the whole box after we ate. And he wanted God to bless that. God's not going to bless that. And here's what God said. God's not going to bless your Twinkies. Come on. There's nothing wrong with some junk food. I'm not putting down junk food. But there's a certain time you can't ask God to heal your body if you're not exercising. Come on. I told him one time, I said, why don't you at least, when you go to Walmart to get all this stuff, park at the edge of the parking lot so you have to walk to the door. He goes, no, I use handicap parking. I said, you don't have a handicap placard. He says, I don't care. You got to understand. Here's the thing. Listen to this. If you don't take care of your body right, you can't ask God to heal it. Anybody excited? See, sometimes God will say, don't touch that, don't do that. There's a reason for it. You don't have to like it, but there's a reason for it. And if you don't exercise, don't sleep right, don't eat right, and and eat way too much, fast food or in the car, and you rush from one place to another, you really can't ask sometimes God to bless you. Thank you, Jesus. How can we expect God to bless your health and heal your body when you don't give him anything to work with? Give him a form. Give him something to work with. In other words, start walking a little bit. Come on. See, This is how God works. He wants to lay out something to where, hey, look, they're trying. They're walking. They're getting into a vision. They like to downsize. They like to change something. See, sometimes, here's why I'm saying some of this. Some people in this room, you want supernatural weight loss to come. And God's going to give it to most people in this room. You're here. Nobody got excited. God's going to give supernatural weight loss to most people in this room that are in the right form. When you're doing a little bit, he'll be like, okay, I can work with that. He's laid out in his word a plan for every one of our lives. And he wants to bring honor to his word. God is not a man that he would lie. He said, I will heal you. You got to live healthy. Now, don't get me wrong. 
I've heard of people who exercise six hours <laughs> through uh, on a during one day they'll exercise they'll exercise six hours three or four times a week and they pass away at thirty six. I don't understand that. Healthy, but just die. And then I've known people like this friend of mine. He died at forty seven. And it took 12 men to carry his casket. That is abnormal. Most of these men were weak, but that's beside the point. (laughs) You got to understand, he left behind a legacy that, man, look at all those guys carrying him. You got to understand. He kept saying, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do that. And I'm not trying to be offensive. This is the way we all are. We do things, here's what God said, we do things to block God. We say, God, bless our mess. He's not going to bless something that you're putting a block on. God's not going to bless something that we're putting a block up. We put a block up and we just like, God, bless it. Guess what? God's not going to bless it. We need to remove the blocks. How do you remove the blocks? One block at a time. How do you remove the blocks? One block at a time. Some of you, let's just say hypothetically, want God to bless your laptop to be able to work so that you can have time to be able to watch movies. There's an order. He's not just going to say, ah, forget everything. Let's just, there it is. There's an order. You know what the number one order? If there's an area in your life that is a mess, repent. Ask God to forgive you and turn it around. See, sometimes we don't know what we should be doing. And... How are we going to do it? What do we need to do, God? See, sometimes you're not supposed to know. All you're supposed to do is get the vision, get the form, get it so that he can come fill it. In other words, repent, get ready, envision it, and get out of the way. And then watch him come and do it. Sometimes I believe God wants to bless you with the new when you're fighting the old one. Sometimes God wants to bless you with new furniture when you're fighting the old. <laughs> and I want to I want to say something to you about that. God said getting rid of it was right. 100% correct. Right. But the problem is, no, it was perfect timing, but we haven't gotten out of the way. Everything that is not normal furniture needs to get out to give him room to fill it. All we did was replace it. It's one thing if you're watching a movie or something. We're going to get into that. I don't need to. They have no idea what I'm talking about. But God told us, literally, told my wife probably more than anybody, our furniture was starting to fall apart. I mean, the type of falling apart that it would bite you when you got up from it. (laughs) I mean, it ripped a hole in the back of my pants once getting up from the couch. I mean, (laughs) hallelujah. I mean, it was a vicious thing. Hallelujah. And God told us just to jump, just throw it all out. So we did. Some people came and picked it up and took it. Hallelujah. But that's beside the point. Hallelujah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Our couch was at the park for a few days. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Some kids took it down to the park. Hallelujah. Hope it bit one of them. No, I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Uh, but, but God told us to get rid of it to make room for the new. But instead of making room for the new, we just brought all these kids' chairs into the living room and replaced it with that. And God said tonight, it's a mess, and he ain't going to bless it. So get everything out and make room for it, and it will come. It will come. Yeah, you can't come over because we have nowhere to sit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord bless us. Hallelujah. Our kitchen chairs ain't much better, God. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a thing behind it, and I got more to say, but I'm not going to until we're alone. Excuse me. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know what to do. Just ask. Have you ever one time said, God, what do I do? What am I supposed to do? I already knew the answer. You have once? What am I supposed to do, God? Include me, is what he asked. This is wonderful. Come on. It's not as bad as it sounds for some of you. But it is for some of you. You ask God to bless you. Clean up. Make room for it. Repent. Make room for it and repent. Because sometimes we want God to bless something that we're not really ready for blessed. Come on. We're not really ready for it. Hallelujah. And every time you're trying to fulfill God's word, he's got to put a wrench in that. He's going to say, whoa, hold the Holy Ghost phone. Because you're trying to make it something happen. I'm supposed to be the one filling this up. Come on. See, sometimes we're trying to help God when he's trying to help you. Does anybody want to receive when God does something? Then let's get it in order. Let's clean up our messes. And I know a lot of you won't change anything. So the messier it gets, the more he takes away. You want him to come down and just bless and make everything right? Yeah. No. He won't do it. It's out of order. A change for anybody. Isn't that right? How many have ever said, oh, I, I, I'm going to change this man. How'd that work out for you? Come on. I, I've had all kinds of people tell me, oh, God gave me this man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change him. No, you're not. Come on. God's not going to give you a, a lemon to make lemonade. Come on. God's got the right one for you. Are you ready tonight to repent, to get out of the way, to ask God to renew the vision? I just preached something similar to this that you didn't even realize probably. A while back, God said, sometimes when it comes to the things of God, he just starts over. That's what he does. Sometimes he just starts over. Why? Because it was being built wrong. The foundation was wrong. And if it doesn't work, we want it to work, don't we? Does everybody, anybody ever want to go on vacation and be stranded because it didn't work? Does anybody ever want to go somewhere, drive in a vehicle that's not going to make it? Do, I mean, come on. Do we, do we really want to marry the wrong person? Come on. For those that have done it already wrong, you don't want to do it again, right? Come on. See, God caused good to come out of old relationships. 
Come on, children. That's blessing. Hallelujah. God still calls good to come from it. And he does not allow messes to not be accomplishments. But he's not going to bless it. Hallelujah. He's just going to reroute you. Our GPS tonight for every person in this building is turn around when possible. In some area of our life, God is saying, turn around when possible. Because it's time for our mess to be cleaned up. That's all it is. Whatever area of your life, we all have an area that's a mess. Some of us need to actually physically clean our mess. If you got a messy desk, sometimes you got to clean it up. Thank you. If you got sticky notes, uh, sometimes you just got to clean up. Sometimes, if your car is not well took care of, why is God going to give you a new one? Take care of the one you got. Come on. God's not going to give you a new room if you don't take care of the one you got. In a new house, a dream home, if you don't take care of the one you got. And this is exciting. You can ask God to bless you with a new house if you don't take care of the one you got. They say it's a rent house. You still got to take care of it. Isn't that right? If you don't sweep the floor, what happens? Hallelujah. It does get dirty, don't it? Don't it? You just step on the Cheerios and keep walking, don't you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Cheerios are good, hallelujah. Aren't you excited? Come on, hallelujah. You can't ask God to bless it. Hallelujah. You picked the wrong person in your life. You can't ask God to bless it. Thank you, Lord. This is good. You can't ask God to bless your schoolwork if it's a mess. Just can't. Can't ask God to bless you with a car if things are a mess. Come on. I'm staying here for a minute because we're digging something. You can't ask God to bless you in any area of your life if you have secrets. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, God doing his little withholding is what I call it. We see it as punishment, don't we? See, when God says no, we always see that as, eh, it's like being grounded. Right? Every time God doesn't heal you immediately, don't you feel like you've been grounded? You can't eat nothing. You can't eat nothing you want. Nothing but sausage patties. <laughs> oh, sorry. She won't eat that. Sorry. <laughs> Why? It feels like a punishment because we're not allowing him to do it. This week, everyone in this room is going to go through a change. Some of you are going to, it's going to seem like the change a person goes through <laughs> uh, when, when they're transitioning from uh, a young woman to not a young woman type of thing. Hallelujah. Because it's going to seem like a hard thing. Because it's deliverance. But some of you can be an easy transition if you just allow God to clean everything up. Repent, 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 for the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Clean out your closets. Not your physical closets. Everything. Hallelujah. And stop anything you're not supposed to do. No matter how bad you want it. Because it's a mess. It's a robbery. It's out of order. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Isn't this good? Anybody excited that God had changed it? We could have been talking about revival. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. We could have said hallelujah tonight, but we didn't. We said, oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. It's time to repent. It's time for to acknowledge. It's time to start sweeping. Receive it. Anybody here receive it? You don't have to like it, but you need to receive it. All right. Let's put it. Do we have any time left? Okay. Let's put it like children can understand. When you're on the ball court, basketball, whatever you're on, I was going to say baseball, but blah, blah, Whatever position you're in, let's just say for a moment that you're in the wrong position, you're in the wrong position, everybody's in the wrong position. Are you guys going to win? Come on. Let's say everybody's hanging around the goalie, just chit-chatting. Not the goalie, your goalie, but the other goalie. Come on, whatever. I, I, let's just say that we're on one side and we're just hanging out. You're going to lose because you're not in order. You're not the way you're supposed to be. The way things of God is, is if you're not in the complete order, you're going to lose every time. If you're not lined up in his plan, you're going to lose every time. doesn't matter how good you've been in the past. doesn't ha- no matter how good you are in other areas. If you're not good in every area of your life, and that's what God's trying to do in this revival, he, is he wants to break every one of us and to be in, in proper alignment and order in every area of our life, financially and health, revival, everything. Even this revival is being established in order. He's just not giving it to us. It's order. Lord Jesus, we just give you praise tonight. We thank you, Lord, for every whipping we've ever received by the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, that there is breakthrough coming in all our lives. And Lord, on an unrelated note, I'm sick of the rain. And I would like for it to stop. And uh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to begin to break through and you're going to cause an increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's so much that we're supposed to be seeing in our lives. It's time for the loveless household to be healed in every area of their life, to be restored financially in every area of their life. It's time. They deserve blessing. Many ways they are perfectly lined up, but they do have a few messes here and there. It's time for the Hoover to come in. Mm-hmm. Vacuum it up. I know Tasha's perfect, but just in case there's anything messy in her life, I ask God that you help her clean it up. Help her children to realize it's important for them too. Thank you, Lord. You know, I wish God would just make a way to where it would be a summer of no cell phones. I think that would help the youth. I think that would help the youth. I think it would help the youth. I think it would help them to get up off their duff and get out there and do things. 